It's another Manly Monday, and this Manly Monday, we are talking about why criticizing various people is woman repellent. Um, good woman repellent, we'll say. And this is inspired by the trend I see of men who are very, very interested in the right to criticize I see a strong correlation between that and men who are like, why don't I have a girlfriend? And yes, this is heteronormative. Um, the dynamics are different with uh, same-sex partners because the expectations on men and women in society are different. We all know that. Right. No matter what side of, of the whole thing we come down on, we know they are different. Um, Van Jones, of all people, you know, not not a guy with the most solid opinion record of late. Uh, but which is why I think the statement is profound, because he's someone who has been more sympathetic than most to Donald Trump. But he said late last week that, uh, you know, Trump can be lawless while Kamala Harris has to be flawless. And that made a big pop. And whether you believe that's true or not, it doesn't matter. Again, this is not about whether you think Kamala Harris is a good candidate. It's the bigger issue. And see, there's an example of there was no need to go there, some commenters. There was no need to go. Kamala Harris is a bad candidate. It wasn't about that. And when you are unnecessarily critical, I mean, I know a lot of guys are like, I don't need that. But practically any woman who isn't really manipulative and that's really important i'll get into why that's significant in a bit uh any woman who isn't highly manipulative is gonna go nope not that guy i'm not getting near that guy um is this fair maybe not it just is and i'm here to help you you know if you want uh a woman in your life uh who likes you for you uh you have to seem like somebody who's going to like someone with flaws. And if you're focused intently on criticism, people are going to get the idea that their flaws are going to be the most important thing to you instead of their other things. And trust me, uh, it may not be that way at first. But if you've been trained to have a negative framing, that's the baseline. That's where it comes back to. And if you don't feel like a critical person, uh, but you get feedback that you are being too critical or people respond to you in a negative way, this is something to look at. Um, and if you like this content, House fund, Spider-Man shit, let's do this, um, Eileen's aunt's house. We only have a few more months to get the money uh, together to save the house or it's going to be demolished because it needs an entirely new foundation because it's half eaten by a sinkhole. Um, and that's what criticism sort of is. It's, it's a sinkhole in a relationship. You got to do it. You got to do it. Uh, sometimes you have to say, look, this isn't working for me. It's part of being a supportive partner is, is being able to be gently corrective when, you know, you think your partner's going in the wrong direction. That's part of respect and criticizing someone respectfully is important. And that's the tie between manipulative women, you know, being the only ones who will, who will go for a critical guy because there's this feminine paradigm that it doesn't matter who you are or how you are raised. Every woman internalizes this somehow 
that men are allowed to criticize women. Women are not allowed to criticize men. Women must be the source of eternal, unyielding, forever support, no matter what a man does. Because if you don't do that, if you criticize him at all, he's going to cheat. The men cheat. Men will cheat. The default state for men is cheater, is something that is fed into all women. Now, it's not true. It isn't true. But this is what a lot of women believe. And this is what a lot of women are afraid of. And of course, if your man cheats on you, you are less of a woman, right? If you criticize your man, you're less of a woman because it's unfeminine. And, uh, you know, personal history of a woman lying to me because she wouldn't check her fucking boyfriend even before he was, she was her boyfriend. Uh, he was her boyfriend. Shining example right there, right? And when there's someone, if, if, if your girlfriend or your partner won't criticize you ever, she's lying to you somehow because sometimes you got to do it. And yeah, there are better ways and less good ways to do it for everybody. But there is a double standard. There is. And okay, that means men have to hear a lot more criticism from other men as well. And some men are going, but I hear criticism from women all the time. Okay. Women are capable of being abusive too, right? So if you think criticizing people all the time is normal as well, guess what? You're going to end up with an abusive partner. If you think that a woman should never criticize a man, you're going to end up with a manipulative partner. There's a happy medium. And I can Almost feel people hitting the dislike button already because your right to criticize is sacrosanct for you. Here's the problem with that. Why are you so focused specifically on criticism? Because you haven't been allowed to do it. Why haven't you been allowed to do it? A lot of this stuff goes back to family of origin. And for a lot of people... It comes from their mother, that no one was allowed to criticize them. And they didn't think they were criticizing everyone. But let's face it, the women who don't think they're being critical, they're nice all the time. They're the most passive aggressive so-and-sos on the planet, right? Instead of saying, you haven't helped clean up once this week. Do it now. It's (sighs) smashing dishes around in the sink, you know? Now, the ideal way to do it is, look, I'm exhausted. Can you please help with the dishes? And why is it helping with the dishes, right? Why aren't dishes a household job? Growing up my whole life, the rule for the entire family with my grandmother, I did this because my grandmother was four foot ten, bless her. Um, In my grandmother's house, it was always... If you don't help cook, you do the dishes. That went out the window in my mother's house because my mother and my sister both come from that school of you, you don't, you aren't direct. It's hint, 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 I'm unhappy. I'm not like that at all. I will be, look, this isn't working for me. So what do I get labeled? A bitch, right? I hate that. I hate that. Because you know what? I think it's better to tell somebody exactly what the problem is than hint, hint. And the person's like, why does this woman always seem upset with me? But she's not saying what the problem is, right? Right. But I am womaning wrong. My mother and my sister are womaning right. Of course, my mother and my sister, well, my mother would constantly lay things on my stepfather whenever she had to know, um, whenever she had to say no to something. It wasn't, we can't do it. It was, he won't like that. He won't like that. Every restaurant, he won't like that. And if you ever got a chance to ask him, he said yes. Right? So 
if a woman never criticizes you, but you think she's okay with you being constantly complaining and negative and carping on things, she is trashing you behind your back, guaranteed. I have seen it so much. That's the dynamic of the thing that I cannot stand about girls' nights, where by the third martini, everyone is, well, not everyone, because I'm sitting here going, but the majority of women there are complaining about their male partners, which is why I can't stand it. It's this thing that is acceptable, and I don't agree with it, and I don't think it's right, but it is normal, and this is the thing we have to accept, that even though we have a higher acceptance of criticism by men, we also have this frustrating, passive-aggressive criticism of men when men aren't around and it's not considered equally acceptable for men to do that to a female partner. And there are reasons for that, but I'm stating before I get into the reasons for that, that this is not fair. If someone is criticizing a partner behind their back or making the partner the bad guy for things behind their back and they're not saying it to them to their face, they're not giving them a chance to correct it, that's a toxic relationship. It is. And the reason women do it is even though it's toxic, it's properly feminine. And this is why... Toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity. We hear it all the time. We don't hear a ton about toxic femininity. No, that's just bitchiness or cattiness. No, that downplays what it is. It's toxic. It is destructive to relationships. It's not okay. But here's the flip side, right? Here's the reason women do it. Because we're taught criticizing somebody to their face is mean. Criticizing somebody behind their back is venting. Not true, but that's what women are taught. By example, you know, because we grow up seeing women get together and complaining about men. But when the men are around, oh, that's fine, honey. And then they do the wine mom, Valium, Xanax, motherfucker thing, right? Like it's, it's crap. It's crap. In so many ways, that part of womanhood is still stuck in the 19 fucking 50s when they called Valium mother's little helper, right? Because women just bottled it all up, bottled it all up, never said anything was a problem, never said they were overwhelmed, just bottled it all up, and then they drink and do Xanax. Valium before that, right? Like the wine mom thing? Direct connection, to this passive aggressive bullshit, this two-faced bullshit, right? But think about how your criticism lands on someone who has been taught that criticizing someone to their face is rude. One, it's, it's, it's telling them, women who are socialized this way, telling them that they are a failure as a woman because you're criticizing them. Because women are supposed to be flawless. Men are allowed to be lawless. Men are allowed to be flawed and break rules and do all that stuff because there's no dichotomy in media between the girl Friday, the good girl, and the femme fatale. The femme fatale is the lawless one who's hot and sexy, but then usually dies or goes to jail at the end because they picked a bad man, right? The good girl is usually the girlfriend of the hero who tends to be a chaotic good hero who breaks rules and may drink and has a lot of bad habits, but oh, he's a good man. But she is stalwart and accepts him no matter what. And if you're not that, then you get the whole gold digger Lois thing with Superman. Uh, Superman's an example of a lawful good character and everybody's like, oh, he's a Boy Scout. There's an example of lawless men flawless women. The whole thing that's interesting about Lois Lane traditionally is that she does have flaws. Some of them are really hokey, like not being able to spell as a reporter, but they deliberately gave Lois Lane flaws because 
of, you know, what went on with that character in both the 40s where strong, strong, quirky women in media were trendy. And then again, in the 70s, we know what was happening there, right? So you get somebody like Mary Jane Watson who gets criticized for, you know, oh, she's a model and oh, she's this and oh, she's that. And she's, you know, on the one hand, she gets criticized for being too perfect or unrealistic. On the other hand, she's wishy-washy. She's periodically really shit to Peter. The characterization is all over the place because, you know, she's out of your league, Peter, right? And... It's a, it's an issue. It's all over the place, right? They're doing much better things with Mary Jane of late, but in order to make her not that we had to make her into Marie Jones, right? And this is broad strokes, right? Like there's decades and decades and decades. This is just examples, not an examination of the character. Don't, don't get lost and go, I can criticize this because this is what you see all the time with men on the internet. And some women, but I see it a lot more in men, where they don't, you guys don't, not all of you, because a lot of you are great, but the ones that wait for the one thing they can criticize and never praise, just like your fucking father did, and that's your idea of what a man is supposed to be? Did your parents get along real well? Right? You know, women have options. Now, and one option is to not date. So you can't get away with that anymore. And this is why the dichotomy of the expectation that women don't criticize and men do criticize because that's manly, but it's not feminine, is gonna end you up trapped in a relationship that is toxic. Because... A person cannot be only on the receiving end of it and really, really watch to see if you take criticism differently from men than you do from women. And because both men and women take criticism less well from women because women are supposed to be nurturers. They're supposed to be comforters. They're supposed to be soothers. I am not a fucking blanket or a thing you shove in a baby's mouth. Okay. Um, a person who never checks you is being dishonest with you. And a lot of people's mothers were mother's little helper, remember? And, but the fact that women find criticism stinks, women are terrified of criticism from men, but women assume men. And uh, again, this is not true. This is just what's going on in women's heads, right? Women assume men are going, she's not hot enough. She's too fat. She's too ugly. She's too old. She's not pretty enough. Her boobs are too small. Her butt is too big or her butt is too small. Her waist is too big. Whatever. Women think men treat women like women treat other women. Men don't. One of the things I learned working in adult television is most men look for reasons to opt a woman in as opposed to opt a woman out. Women are the ones that sit around and going, she looks bad. Why'd you do her hair that way? Oh my God. She thinks that looks good. Don't tell her. <laughs> oh my God. Right? Like men, men don't think that way. But women think men think that way because the girly girls don't fucking socialize too much with men in an honest way. So they're not honest with the men. So the men aren't honest with them. And they think men think just like women. Y'all don't. We know that. Okay. I know that. I hear you. I'm you telling this to help you. So how do you maintain your precious right to criticize, but do it in a way that is not going to attract the manipulative or abusive ones, right? Because you want a good woman. You don't want one of the bad ones. That's the thing. It's better to be alone than be with a manipulator or an abuser, right? Is the criticism on topic, right? If you're picking on an aside, make a video about Barack Obama's messaging, Kamala Harris is a bad candidate. Not the point. And if that's all you say, good women are going to go, 
he's an asshole who can't follow a plot. And the manipulative women, this is where the whole pick me thing comes from. It's not pick me, it's I'm going to pick on him. He's fresh meat. The manipulative women are going to go, oh, don't listen to that bitch. I understand your right to criticize. I'm good with criticism. No, she's not. Nobody's good with criticism. No one is good with criticism. Criticism registers to the brain like physical pain. Some of us have a better tolerance for it. Some people are self-destructive, and so they have that pleasure pain principle. But no one stable likes criticism. Anybody says, I like criticism, they're lying either to you or to themselves. The correct thing is nobody likes being criticized, but you know what? Sometimes it's useful, right? We have to hear feedback. Now, feedback is different from criticism. Saying, I I don't think Kamala Harris is a great candidate, but I get what you're saying here. Interesting stuff. That's not a criticism. That's just stating your opinion, right? That's not the only thing that comes out of your mouth is shitty. There's a difference. If you're putting that out there, how do you expect to attract anyone that's going to treat you well? You can't. And I'm not saying this is your fault. This is what you were taught. But you're an adult now. You can learn new habits. And if you're one of those people who when someone says, yeah, okay, Fuck off. Oh, no, let me explain. No, no, you're digging your hole deeper because anyone who will accept that behavior is looking to manipulate you because no one with boundaries accepts. Let me have a private conversation with you to explain all the reasons that you're wrong and I'm right. No one with any self-respect does that. So if you're continuing to behave that way, if you are a chronic explainer, if you need to be right, You are going to attract people who manipulate you and hurt you. You have to check that so that you can attract people with self-respect who are going to respect you. Because when you only post shittiness and then when someone checks you on your shittiness and you go, oh no, let me explain my shittiness. The only people who are going to respond positively to that are people who are looking to use you. And they may not even realize they're doing it because they think that transactional relationships are the only kind of relationships there are. Those are the women that are going to use you for money. Those are the women who are going to treat you as, you know, the Scott Summers, the safe guy who will always be there and eat any shit she dishes out. And then the Wolverine, who's the exciting guy who's completely fucked up. Did I mention he's exciting? Right. And now we've got the, I mean, a fucking polyamorous relationship, and that's not fucking poly, right? It's, it's not. It's not like the Scott went into the relationship going, this is what it is. Is this consent? It's, let me fuck other guys or get out. That ain't cool. That ain't cool. That's not respecting you, right? It's trendy right now, but it's not respect. And that's not saying all poly is bad. Is just saying that, that ain't healthy. But they put it in the comics because it's relevant, right? And we could do a whole thing. Maybe I'll get Bianca on the channel that talks about, talk about like toxic shit in comics. That's not the point right now. The point is protecting you from manipulative and abusive women by, and you know, this is true of men as well. If you're perpetually negative, you're only going to attract guys who are looking for a sugar daddy. And who are going to originally think they can take it and then it's going to grind, grind them down and grind them down and they don't speak up. And then you're the bad guy who was horribly abusive. Men are starting to do it too. I've seen that situation. So if you want someone who is going to support and praise you, you have to show that you're somebody where that's a two way street. Because if you're thinking, well, I, you know, the, the whole uh, you know, dating the asshole romanticy trope, it's toxic. Women with self-respect, and you want a woman with self-respect because she's going to accept you for who you are, not expect perfection, and not expect perfection in herself. And if a woman expects perfection in herself, 
she's going to deflect and project her own negative self-talk onto you. You don't want that. So you want to be fair, right? Don't agree to things you don't agree with. But if you see something you can agree with, do it. Be the person who says yes, not just no. And you will attract people who say yes, not just no. Make sense? All right. Say yes to the Save the House crowdfund Spider-Man shit. We talked about Spider-Man, you know, Spider-Man shit. Thanks. Happy Monday. Thanks for watching Manly Mondays.